If you'd like to turn to Isaiah chapter 62, and uh, we'll read the whole chapter, which is just 12 verses. Chapter 62, beginning at verse 1. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. But thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and thy land Beulah, for the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. I have set watchmen upon the walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence, and give him no rest, till he establisheth, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the, in the earth. The Lord hath sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength, surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat for thine enemies, and the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine which thou hast labored, for which thou hast labored. But they that have gathered it shall eat it, praise the Lord, and they that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. Go through, go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the people, cast up, cast up the highway, gather out the stones, lift up a standard for the people. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And thou shalt be called sought out, a city not forsaken. And we thank God for his word and we pray that he blesses it to us tonight. We've looked at some of these verses before, but they hit me fresh this week and they were making me feel, you know how sometimes when you read the word of God you just begin to feel that movement in your heart. And So the question I'm going to ask you is, have you come anticipating that God will grant a breakthrough? that God will open heaven tonight and pour out the blessing that we long for. I'm sure we're all here tonight and we're ready to cast ourselves on God for a mighty outpouring of his spirit. We're waiting for the power from on high. You see, we realize, don't we, that the church needs this, and so does the nation. It needs this mighty outpouring. And we want to see the church revived, and we want to see the nation won for Jesus Christ. I remember having a conversation with a, a friend of mine a few years ago, and he was speaking. We were, we were talking about preaching because we were both pastors, and he was talking about reaching Scotland for Jesus Christ. And we were united in that desire, of course. And then my friend got involved in this group. Believers, but their heart's desire was to see 
Scotland taken for the Lord Jesus. And he showed me this list. It was a list of all the various things that they were doing to accomplish the desire that they had to win Scotland for Christ. And he showed me this list and there was no prayer meeting for revival on the list. There was a list of all the different meetings, all the different things that they were intending to do. But there was no prayer meeting. We almost fell out that night. Because you see, we, are, we will never reach Scotland for Christ if we don't have prayer meetings that are crying out for power to come and for God to do a special move and make a special move and do a, a special work in the land. No matter what we try from our own creativity or with our own efforts, we won't win Scotland. The great Lloyd-Jones said that when the church goes through a barren spell, what it does is that it organizes evangelistic outreaches. It organizes special evangelistic meetings. It organizes even social activities. And what it should be doing is getting on its knees in prayer meetings, crying to God for revival. That's what we need to do. That's why we're here. We're here tonight to, to pray for revival, not because we're super spiritual. It's just because we want to see it happen for the glory of God. But there's something beyond that. And, and this whole passage speaks of it. We pray for revival, and when we pray for revival, it actually connects our heart with the heart of God. And that's the title tonight, Connecting with the Mighty Heart of God. Because you see, God wants revival. God wants to see his people filled with power and strength for his glory once again. We must believe that. This passage begins with, For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace. The I in this passage is the I in chapter 61. The servant of the Lord, the messianic servant of God. Jesus uses Isaiah 61 to describe his own ministry. Luke 4 verse 18. And so what we have here in our passage is the voice of the Messiah. We are listening to what the Messiah wants. This is the voice of Christ tonight. Christ is speaking to us in this passage. That should thrill us before anything else. That Jesus would speak to Zion Baptist Church in this way tonight. But what we have is the communication from the messianic servant, from the Messiah. We have this communication of the divine heart. We are being told what's in the heart of God tonight. And what's in the heart of God is a renewal and a revitalizing of his people. He wants to see the church on her feet again and doing what she's been called to do. We're, we're reading what God wants. This is God opening up his heart to us through this passage. Because you see, there exists in the heart of the Lord a desire for revival and a determination to bring it about. 
That's what this passage tells us. I want it, says God, and I'm determined for it to happen. Well, this encourages us tonight because here we are. We want revival. And we're determined that it's going to happen. That means our hearts tonight are connected to his. We have the same desire in our hearts as God has in his. And that's no surprise, really. It's no wonder. Because the spirit of Christ lives within us and brings with him the heart and mind of Jesus. And the heart and mind of Jesus is the heart and mind of his Father. Oh, hallelujah. We belong to a Savior tonight who is expressing his heart's desire for a revival in the church that bears his name. How wonderful does that sound in a believer's ear? We know that this is the desire of Jesus. And as we come to him and call to him for that very thing, we can be confident that there's no estrangement. He's put the desire in us because it's in him. But you'll notice as well, the heart of God in verse 1 I will not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness. That's his heart. But when he begins to do it, when God begins to act upon what's in his heart, It's noticed. It's noticeable. It's something that doesn't go unnoticed. When God moves in the way in which he says in verse 1, it cannot be done in secret. Those around us need to know. If it's genuine revival, it goes beyond the people who are being revived. And it goes to those we touch. It goes to those we live with. It goes to those that we, we are surrounded by. Revival touches beyond the church. They will see it. And the Gentiles, in verse 2, the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name. In other words, we won't be what we were. And, and, and the city and the nation around us will know it. They've changed. There's a change taking place. There's something in them. There's something there that wasn't there before. Oh, we'll tell you what it is. We will tell you what it is. The Lord had promised never to rest until our righteousness was seen by those around us. And he's moved. And now you see it. That's the joy of belonging to Christ this night, to know that God is at work, God is determined. Revival is always noticed. Revivalism is not noticed. We can work it up, whip it up, and keep it in-house. We can do all these things that some do and keep it in-house, and the world around us have no idea. But when revival comes... Because Almighty God has moved to make it happen. To make his people seen and noticed for his glory. Then they're noticed for his glory. The Hebridean revivals, the Welsh revival, the Irish revival, the Great Awakening, the Kosaith revival, the Kirkishots revival, Cambus Lang revival. Every single time 
The people around the church were impacted by the new life that was in the church and flowing out through the church. That's what God promises here. I will not rest until I make your righteousness shine and the Gentiles will see it. Others will notice that I am moving. A true revival always makes this kind of impression. They might not like it, and they might criticize it, but they'll notice it. The sights and the sounds of revival are a, a supernatural confirmation that God once again is holding up his church. Oh Lord, may that be the reality. May that be the reality. So God, doesn't just say that a revived people will be noticed because of the righteousness that he holds up and shines through them. Thou shalt, verse 3, thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hands of the Lord. A royal diadem in the hand of our God. That's what a revived people are. They're, they're something that God wants to display. It's not just his holiness, his righteousness that is witnessed within us, but he actually puts us on display. A revived church is always put on display by Almighty God. He holds it in his hand. He wears it as a crown. How wonderful is our God. This is his desire for his people. I will not rest. Look at verse 8. The beginning of verse, the first part of the verse. The Lord hath sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength. That tells us that it doesn't matter what we do. We can't cause revival to come. It is always by the divine initiative of God. We don't create it. We can't persuade it. We can't force it in any way whatsoever. It has to come because God decides to send it. And that's where some of our American cousins get it wrong when they hold a revival or they speak about holding a revival and they're confusing revival with an evangelistic meeting. We don't hold a revival. We receive revival from Almighty God. We know that. But there are consequences of this outpouring from God. It doesn't just last for the night. It doesn't just last for a meeting or a couple of meetings. There are, there are consequences. Look at the, the rest of verse 8. I will no more give thy corn to be meat for the, thine enemies, and the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine for the which thou hast labored. But they that have gathered it shall eat it. And praise the Lord. And they that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. When the people of God are revived, they prosper. Spiritually, they are fed. Spiritually, they have all that they've longed for. For however long that revival is, is with us in the, the sovereignty of God, we know, we, we, we are enriched and blessed by his presence. No longer are we like the people of Haggai. Sometimes I think that's what the church is like. Haggai chapter 1 verses 9 and 10 and later on in the chapter where, where 
They've labored and they've labored and they go to draw from their labor and there's nothing there. Because all they've done is work. Isn't that an amazing thing that when we work and work and work for a blessing from God, when we work and work and work for revival, we don't get it. It's thrilled me all my Christian life. But when I stop working for it, when I stop sweating for it, God gives it. Hallelujah. We mustn't be like the people of Haggai. We, we, in Haggai's day, we need to, we need to um, pray. Connecting our heart with the heart of the Father. Knowing that his intention is to do it. Pray and rest. Not lie back. I mean, be at peace with the fact. You see, in revival, the church enjoys the fruit of her labors. What I mean by that is, when revival comes, we're still holding the meetings and we're still speaking to people and we're still doing the things we should be doing. But these endeavors, suddenly we find there's fruit. It's happening because God has moved. We need to be faithful in our ministry, faithful in our service, be a faithful church doing the things we're supposed to be doing and praying with all of our might for a Holy Ghost revival because when the Holy Spirit comes, all the work that we are just doing week in, week out is blessed. God blesses faithful ministry. He doesn't particularly bless innovative ministry or creative ministry or strange ministry to attract the attention of people. We are not called to attract the attention of people. We are called to be faithful servants of Almighty God and see Him move and bless that ministry. How long have we been here, Zion? How long has this church existed? How long have we prayed as a fellowship for revival? Isn't it encouraging tonight that it's faithful ministry that God blesses? Faithful prayer warriors that know the blessing of God. Faithful Christians in all the work that they seek to do that God lays before them. Faithful ministry is blessed by Almighty God. Hallelujah. And he's determined that there will be revival within his people. There's a, a writer, preacher, a man called Vance uh, Havnery says that there isn't, there wasn't, I love this. There was never a true revival that did not produce heartburn and hallelujahs. Heartburn and hallelujahs. And as we work for God and do our, our thing that God has given us to do, oh, may the heart be burning as God moves. May that I pray that your heart's burning tonight. I pray that in this church there are hearts beginning to burn and burn more brightly than ever before. I pray that you feel the heart burn. And I also pray that the hallelujahs are beginning to rise and they're no longer being sung in silence in your heart. But there's a, there's a real danger, a real danger 
that you're going to erupt into hallelujahs. You see, when the Spirit of God moves upon a people, when the Spirit of God touches his people, the heart goes on fire. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the hallelujahs rise. We can't stop. We have to praise God. Isn't that a sign of it? A sign of the God, of God beginning to move? That, that our hearts are beginning to burn? Isn't that a sign that God's beginning to move? That, that we have a desire deep in us to praise and worship his holy name? And it's not something that's duty. It's something that we, we can't hold it in. It might be an eruption of praise and worship. And it might be loud and it might be, it might be full. And it might be silence when the heavy presence of God just descends upon us and we have to sit in the presence of God when it's almost like God is saying, you will go when I'm finished with you. Oh, please, 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 please. May it be the case. I will not rest until, he says. I will not rest until. Oh, may we know the, the until. Maybe, may we know. Because you see, when that happens, look at verse 10. Go through, go through the gates. We go out. Prepare you the way of the people. Prepare the way for the people. You see, we are the sign that God is moving when our church is lifted up and, and invigorated by the life of the Holy Spirit. But it's not just for us, it's for the people. It's for the people in here and it's for the people out there. That the people in here are so on fire that we take the heat wherever we go. That the flame goes wherever we go and there's wee sparks coming off us. Oh, when the Holy Spirit comes, there's going to be such a crackle of the flame of Almighty God that, that other people are going to catch on fire just because we are alive with Jesus Christ's life. We are pulsating with the life of the Savior. Please, Lord. Do you want that tonight? Is that what we're here to do? Not everyone feels that way, of course. But God's heart is for revival. God wants to sovereignly send revival. But even when we talk about God sending revival, that we can't work it up, I'll be finished in a moment. We can't work it up. It has to be sent. It comes through the sovereignty of God. You have some Christians, not, not here, we're here to pray for revival, but you have some Christians who say, yeah, we believe in revival. We believe revival is a sovereign work of God. Therefore, until he sends it, we just He'd done on with the work. Yeah, I agree. Get on with the work until God sends revival. But we better be praying that God will send revival. We better be praying, not just working. Folks, do you ever get the impression that other people or some people think, some Christians think that the work is rolling up the sleeves and preaching. The work is rolling up the sleeves and leading us in worship or whatever your ministry may be. We are about to get involved in the work this evening. At the heart of doing what we need to do until God sends revival, at the heart of it is seeking God for revival. 
It's really exciting to be a Christian. It's really exciting to be part of this church because we all have the same desire. Here we are. We all want the same thing. Finish with this. Look at his heart again in verse 1. I will not hold my peace And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until. And then you look at verse 7. Give him no rest till he establishes, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. I will not rest, said God. And God also says that the watchmen must not rest from their crying out to him to do what he said is in his heart. Oh God Almighty, send revival. Send revival. You say it's what's in your heart, oh God. We come to you tonight to connect our hearts with your heart. Send the Holy Ghost revival that this nation would be touched. Heavenly Father, how we praise you tonight. We thank you for this wonderful realization that we're not asking you to do something strange sounding to you. We're not coming to you tonight to ask something outlandish. As we pray for a Holy Ghost revival that will set us on fire and this nation on fire around us. We come with our hearts and your heart in harmony. O Lord God Almighty, our hearts in harmony with the heart of God.